What's up, sons? Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple RX 590s to see which one has the best cooling potential in their actual design. They are going to be the XFX Fat Boy Edition, and then on the Sapphire side, we have the Nitro Plus Special Edition, both of them being top of the line for their respective manufacturers, and both of them being companies that only make graphics cards for the AMD Radeon series. So they aren't touching the green side. So if you want to be as least supportive to companies on the green team, then you're going to be looking at XFX or Sapphire typically. And now while there is the 1660 Ti, if you are, for lack of a better term, a Radeon fanboy, and you only buy red, then you want to know probably which card's going to be cooling the best. So if you're looking for an RX 590, I hope you will stick around to check out the rest of this video. So first things first, let's talk about testing methodology. We're going to be using fire strike stress test and 20 passes, which takes about 20 minutes or so. And we'll go ahead and get us the max temperature. Typically when you're looking for max temperature, what you're going to do is run a stress test like that and then wait until the temperature gets to basically its peak. And then you'll see it kind of tick down one degree, tick up one degree, tick down one degree, tick up one degree. And that will tell you that you're pretty much at the top uh, temperature you're going to be getting at that time on that device, especially with the graphics cards. Now you can get that pretty much any time out of a fire strike 20 pass test, but never rely on that test to give you the full temperature. Make sure that you see that change happening there. Next, what we did is we threw out the stock fan curves. While you will see the results of the stock fan curves here in this video, they are going to be varying. So we aren't going to be able to directly compare the cooling capacity of the coolers on these cards if we were to use the stock fan curves. So what we did was is we set certain rotations per minute on the GPUs and that way we were able to compare say 1000 RPMs to 1000 RPMs and say which one's better. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is we have to keep a close eye on the power consumption and the basically the watts the card is actually pulling. Make sure those are similar and in, in that kind of fashion or in that idea what we did have to do is turn down the core clock rate on the xfx fat boy because it was coming in out of the box at 1580 megahertz while on the sapphire nitro plus we were only at 1560 megahertz so we knocked the fat boy down to 1560 megahertz and that resolved the voltage difference as well as the power consumption difference between both of the cards on all of these tests the rest of the cards outside of the core clock are pretty similar actually identical you're going to have the same inputs as far as one display port or three display port one hdmi 2.0 one dvid both of them have an eight pin pcie power plus a six pin pcie power both of them have two fans and both of them have a similar heat sink design with a basically the the copper piping going on there. That being said, the results are quite interesting and let's get into them. Taking a look at the stock fan curve, the fat boy had a, a max temperature of 75 degrees Celsius, while the nitro had a top temperature and max temperature of 74 degrees Celsius. Now at 1700 RPMs, this is where we move into the, the actual results here. So at 1700 rotations per minute, we had the fat boy clock in at 81 degrees Celsius while on the nitro plus it clocked in at 73 degrees Celsius. Moving up from there, we had a rotation of 2300 RPMs on both of the fans. The fat boy clocked in at 73 degrees Celsius while the nitro plus clocked in at 67 degrees Celsius. Bumping up to about 2,800 rotations per minute, the Fat Boy clocked in at 70 degrees Celsius, while the Nitro clocked in at 59 degrees Celsius. And then at 100% fan speed, regardless of the actual rotations per minute, which we'll go over here in a second, the Fat Boy clocked in at 70 degrees Celsius, while the Nitro Plus clocked in at a very cool 46 degrees Celsius. 
All of these tests were performed in a climate controlled office at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which comes out to around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius. And on the 100% mark, the this is what's interesting. The XFX actually has a max rotation speed that is quite a bit faster, about 200 RPMs faster than the Nitro Plus Special Edition coming in at 3308, while the Sapphire came in at 3170. Both of these cards, I did not reapply thermal paste. They are from the factory, out of the box, shipped to me in this state, in this condition. And it's very clear that the Sapphire wipes the board with the xfx fat boy so if i was going to personally pick up an rx 590 i would pick up a 590 from sapphire as opposed to from xfx which is not always true so make sure you check every generation because the companies are always competing and one one ups the other here and there the other thing to note is on the fire strike stress tests the frames, uh, the, it basically has a percentage of frames passed. While both of them passed, the Sapphire did beat the XFX in consistency and reliability with the percentage of frames that were actually passed in the Firestrike stress test. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you have any more questions about either one of these cards, please let me know, and I will see you next Tuesday.